I've known Elon for decades, actually. So I think we have a much more of a rapport. I've done a lot of interviews with him. So I think that's why he was more comfortable. But I, I wanted to, him to talk about these things and to see if he's moved beyond what was happening to him. Um, I, I don't happen to smoke pot, so I didn't have any. Um, so I just wanted to have a serious discussion about his products, what had happened to him this year, and where he's going. And I, I thought he did a good job. I thought it was a great interview, and he was funny at parts. I think he was uh, obstreperous at parts, and at parts he was really informative about where the, the roadmap for Tesla and, and SpaceX and the boring company and Elon Musk uh, is going. And finally, he showed some regret. I yeah. mean, it was only up until recently where he, he tweeted that he would do it all over again. And people mm -hmm. were thinking, oh, hasn't he learned yeah. his lesson? Maybe yeah. something has finally sunk in. Yeah, I think I, I'm, I was going to. He, he and I email quite a bit, and I, we talk about those things. But I think I, I think I wanted him to think about it and be reflective about what happened. And he obviously calls, you know, shareholder uh, things that weren't great for shareholders. And what's, what I think is interesting about Elon Musk is, look, he's not making a photo app. He's, he's not making, like, some software. This is hard stuff that he's doing. He's doing cars. He's doing rockets. He's doing all kinds of vehicles. Um, he's doing a big, giant tunnel digger. Um, so this is really substantive stuff that's really difficult to do. And I want to show that part of him, which is very inventive and very forward future looking. And at the same time, talk about his responsibility as a leader and as a CEO. And so I think he rose to the occasion. It was glad he apologized and showed regrets. Um, I don't know if it'll stick. Um, I hope it does. Uh, he was obviously exhausted over the last year working on the, the Model 3. Um, which got great reviews, and also they've done rather well uh, from a financial point he of view. He was a, a more contrite in the interview, and, mm -hmm. uh, and before we leave, I want you to tell us where we can find the podcast, but, but yeah. he was more contrite with respect to journalists, but he still does seem to have a chip on his shoulder yeah. uh, on that. But one of the fascinating areas, I thought, is where you uh, uh, questioned him about Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. uh, because the Saudis were supposedly the, su going to be the suppliers of money yeah. into his go private effort. Uh, and you asked him some very pointed questions about how he feels about the leadership there, the nation there, and the, and the money that flows from there into Silicon right. Valley. Talk to me. Well, he, um, you know, I, I'm having some trouble with a lot of the Silicon Valley people taking money from people who, uh, a government that murdered a journalist and, and, and did so rather blatantly. Um, and so, uh, you know, this money that's coming to Silicon Valley, it's billions and billions of dollars from Saudi Arabia. And so, you know, they had bought into Tesla publicly and they may or may not still own it. He didn't know, actually. Um, but he was looking at money uh, for them, like a lot of people. That's not unusual. And I wanted him to reflect on it. I want all of Silicon Valley leadership to reflect on it and think really hard about where their investment money is coming from. And so he did, and he was very fair. And what I liked about Elon is, in a lot of the answers, including with the journalists, he apologized, but not completely. He, and the same thing here. He said he wouldn't take their money, but at the same time, the Saudi people shouldn't be... <coughs> Uh, attacked necessarily for what their leaders did. Um, and so I like that. It was honest. I think he was honest about what he thought, and he didn't give a pat answer just to please. And so I kind of I appreciate that in a person, if they're being honest. And so he was, you could see him sort of working it through, and I like, I like that part of the interview. Yeah, I agree. I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Uh, getting back to how hard it's been for Tesla and mm -hmm. ramping up the Model 3 car, you had asked him uh, that, uh, you know, how do you look at when you when you're going with the Model 3 and others, and he mm -hmm. said that he thinks Tesla's doing pretty well right now. It's not staring death in the face, which seems right. to imply that at one point it had been on the brink. Is that the impression yeah, that you got? that's what he said. He said he's, he, 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 he's, he, he's almost religious about it. He's like, Tesla cannot die. It, it, the future of the world, climate change and things, he's very passionate about that. Um, he thinks that he has moved forward, and I agree with him that the development of electric cars by a factor of 20 years. And, and, you know, all the others are in it because of him. And so that's a really interesting, you know, he's not being an egomaniac saying that. And so I think a lot of the things he's doing, is including space exploration, including tunnels with traffic and things like that, he really believes he's, he's, he's actually changing the world. And even though Silicon Valley people say that, I kind of think he is in the, he's in the zone where you could change the world. Um, but he also had, was funny throughout this interview, the whole thing, our whole exchange about scooters. You know, I love them. I think I look fantastic. He said I looked undignified. He didn't want to make a scooter. Uh, he wanted to make a pickup truck that's really cool that nobody wants to buy, made of titanium. It was, it was a lot of fun. There was a lot of fun parts in it.